Hello and welcome to Orbiting Brick. In today's video, it's returning to a classic topic, which is recreating proposed spacecraft. And here, oh, so many people have done the R700 in Kerbal Space Program. I haven't seen many people do the R700A. So, as I'm probably getting drowned out by the rocket launching, I have to say something about the inconvenience, the plumes seem a bit small for the engines. That's because I couldn't get them to rescale properly. See, the correct engine model existed, but it was at the wrong scale. So I resized it, but uh, the plume didn't scale with it, and I was unable to figure out how to do that. Hopefully it doesn't mess with the European experience that much. I just I try like I try a few things to get configs to work, but it just wouldn't. But yes, the UR-700 was an alternative to the N1. And it's notable for its strange design, with far too many separate boosters. UR stands for Universal, Universal Rocket, and the idea of the design was that it would be modular apart so it could be assembled into launch vehicles of arbitrary sizes. So they had a set of launch vehicles from the UR-100, 200, 500, 700, and some proposals beyond that. And yeah, just when you have a tank of a set size and you need to make a larger launch vehicle, you cluster them. And this uh, first stage and the uh, boosters, it's, uh, it's accurate to what uh, most UR-700 designs are. The UR-700A replaces the upper stages with some nuclear stages. Yeah, the, uh, the stage, well, the second stage, they're actually forgiven by Russian name schemes, the, the boosters that now detach. That would be the first stage, and this core is the second stage, so the nuclear stage would be the third stage. And there's actually two nuclear stages, so that would, that would then be a fourth stage. But yes, we have nuclear thermal rocket engines on the third stage. They will be fired whilst we're still in the atmosphere. Which I'm just going to say... It's interesting to me how much of a difference there is between a Soviet and American nuclear thermal rockets. So, for some reason, Soviet engines have a far better uh, thrust-weight ratio, and so yeah, it opened up possibilities of using them just for like upper stages of launch vehicles. And also, the problem that I also was probably influenced by the fact their launch height was uh, well away from anything important. Yeah, this uh, launch uh, will end up uh, leaving just some uh, nuclear reactors to crash into carbon somewhere. Anyways, I probably should go back to that launch. So yeah, you saw the uh, famous parts of the uh, UR-700 have now been jettisoned, and now we're burning seven nuclear engines. These are from Kerbal Atomics. They're the only engines I could find that have the correct performance. I believe they're like the stubber, like stubber or something like that. Yeah, Kerbal Atomics mod from, from Nertea, it's discussed far less frequently than the other uh, just Nertea mods. But yeah, I think it's, from what I've seen, it's uh, pretty useful. But yes, our payload is the LK-700 Lunar Lander. <laughs> this was the, uh, the, the R-700 alternative to the LK and uh, lock of the N-1. It is a direct descent craft, as you can see. So, like uh, many Kerbal Space Program landers, the entire craft will land on the surface of the moon, or in this case, Mon, and uh, take off without and return to uh, Earth or Kerbin without talking to another craft. I decided to put some extra rebelling on the LK-700, for lack of a better word. And then I see in uh, most models and renders of it, purely because I thought it looked, I thought it looked better. Guys, yes, I'm still using the New Horizons Planet Pack, which means that uh, this rocket's gonna be flying a very different trajectory than uh, the real life proposal, and the main focus was on the rocket, anyways. But yeah, the New Horizons, uh, well, it had the gas giant Sona, which you could see the rings of, and quickly going off that, there goes that nuclear stage. Now, seven nuclear reactors should uh, hopefully crash into something not important. And so now we are left with just uh, three nuclear engines, and uh, now we uh, will have to we have to plot our course, Simon. 
Yeah, again, these engines have a pretty good performance. With just three of them and this large craft, we have a thrust weight ratio of a 3 point, well, 0 0.36. Far better than what you can get with American nuclear engines. And you saw the trajectory there. We're gonna get to them on in just two days. Uh, this craft, I believe, I don't. I probably should have checked uh, how much on uh, life support uh, this benzene was I uh, launched with. I remembered like it was a pretty good amount. It, was that long? it was definitely p above six days. I knew I was gonna have enough uh, for the uh, intended mission. However, events will transpire that will. Uh, greatly lengthened that mission. And, uh, yeah. Anyways, yeah, we're gonna get a nice fast trajectory. But uh, what's not nice is, uh, for some reason, one of the mods I have auto sets your uh, SAS when you have a maneuver. And it's the most annoying thing ever, and I don't know why I didn't turn off sooner. But it means that for this video, my RCS is disabled every single time I plot a maneuver. I'm not sure why it does that, but, uh, yeah. Which means that every single time I have to start burning, the craft will do some unintended uh, flips. Anyways, we do eventually get our carbon escape burn done. Beautiful view of a sauna we had there. And we now leave carbon behind. And also, at uh, some point along uh, this uh, time warp, uh, the uh, reaction was on the capsule break. So we've already had RCS failures, uh, reaction oil failures, and yeah, there's gonna continue to be more failures. But you know what? It's, I feel like there's some there's some level of historical accuracy there. Yeah, we're gonna do a mid-course correction since uh, the Kekurban and the Mun's orbits are inclined relative to each other in this. So I haven't been able to say anything about it yet, and there hasn't really been a good view of it. But I have to say, possibly my favorite part of this overall design is that random antenna dish on the uh, top of the capsule. I had, there's nothing else like it in any other designs from what I've seen. Alright, so due to the instability during our previous maneuver, we need to conduct another one. Which doesn't go ideal. We're currently burning the opposite direction. But we will uh, rotate and we will be able to uh, perform our maneuver eventually. Also, I'm just going to say, I really thought that uh, with their training of staff uh, and with the uh, nuclear reactors, uh, that you'd have to uh, deal, you'd have to worry more about uh, heat, uh, this, this heat in general and uh, what it could uh, deal. But for some reason, the reactors don't have, like, I put a single, like, I put uh, six radiators and that seems to be enough. Anyways, and yeah, I'm currently still struggling to get that maneuver completed. We will eventually get one of the engines to light. This engine, engine igniter is just... Well, again, engine igniter makes it so it's random chance if your engine ignites if you don't have your fuel stabilized. And considering our ullage motors, our RCS, are no longer functional, yeah, we can't really get ullage. And since we don't have RCS, the craft is uncontrolled and it does a uncontrolled tumbles through space. Eventually, we do arrive at the Mun and can perform our orbital insertion burn. And uh, yeah, right now our delta V looks pretty good. We still have all the uh, fuel left in the LK-700 lander. And uh, that should ideally be enough for us to do orbit, land, and return to Kerbin. However, events will transpire that will prevent that. Also, I guess I probably, I probably should have brought more attention to this. But yeah, I have the full three crew. Some of the proposals only had two crew on the LK-700. But yeah, and I... All the uh, portraits are hidden, and I can't really talk much about their names. But yeah, we have a pilot, engineer, and scientist, the classic assortment. And getting some nice views of the uh, just various random bits I put on the uh, lander. 
You might, my newest one of the hard yes thrusters is replaced with just a random box. That's because on all the just on every on all the materials I can find, there's just some like random circle thing. I have absolutely no idea what goes there, so I just put some random stuff there. And hopefully there is a graphic on screen explaining why I'm referring to you, because otherwise that sounds strange out of context. But anyways, we are now performing our deorbit for when we selected a landing site. This a large creature. And then everything goes wrong, since I had my throttle still up when I just ended the uh, that upper stage. And that meant all the engines tried to ignite, and we had no ullage. And that meant they expended their only ignition. They are definitely supposed to have more than one ignition, but uh, the entire doesn't have proper engine igniter configs. Which means that our engines are now all dead. Now I'll try and get our engineer, but whose name I will try, I will not try to pronounce. Just, yeah, look at that name there. And yeah, I'll try and, uh, I'll try and uh, fix the engine, but uh, I first I'm uh, trying to fix it properly and uh, reload the igniter. We don't have igniters to reload it. I'll try and cheat it by using uh, the construction mode to, um, you, like, to, uh, replay, to just replace the engine with itself. And to uh, see if that fixes it, it will not. And so, that means all, just all four of our landing and well, just well, all four of our engines are now dead. We only have the ullage, the ullage motors on this, which are not enough to land, obviously. Our thrust rate ratio is only 0 0.21. We've already orbited, and this, yeah, this is not looking good. And now, I realize I probably should have instead just re re reinserted into orbit uh, using these uh, motors. I'm even, I'm actually not even sure if I could have done that considering I did, I started the, I already started the orbit by the time I stage. So, I deploy the landing gear as you can see. And pretty soon I will just end that uh, landing stage and start using uh, the, the ascent stage essentially. It has a terrier engine on it which has multiple ignitions. And so we're able to actually finally get some thrust, and are able to actually land. However, this m most of this fuel was meant to be used for returning to Kerbin. So that's gonna lead to some unfortunate circumstances upon landing. But yeah, uh, we're able to uh, land uh, actually somewhat safely. And now, because uh, Paranax continued this randomly lags on my uh, in on my install, you know these settings like pretty low. So you can only see the rocks uh, just uh, phased in at uh, just. Very low altitude, I hope I can uh, increase that. Yeah, um, well, I said land safely, it's not the smoothest landing, but we do successfully land. There are some antennas I forgot to deploy on the lander, I'm sorry about that, I completely forgot to. Yeah, that's actually a pretty nice shot with sun in the background. And now we can un very ungracefully deboard the uh, lander. And then pretend that never happened and take some uh, far more uh, just far more professional looking first steps. We can then plant our flag at a scenic spot. And then get our engineer and a scientist uh, onto the surface, uh, giving a far more graceful descent to the uh, planager. Again, the ladder, the other part of it is a tweak scale the ladder part, is the only way I could find that actually like looked correct. Yeah, the ladder, as always, didn't work. And we can take a nice group photo, 
Most of us like to take some uh, Kerbal uh, inventory, like, is it like Kerbal inventory system? Just random stuff with us? Because why not? Well, the things with a basketball, the palm being placed almost crashed my game. You know, that was in real time, how long the game froze after just placing a basketball. And a quick, quick save to avoid having to redo the mission because of a literal basketball. And then we could do basically nothing else with it. Yeah, I only did this because I never messed around with the Kerbal Inventory System stuff. And we can then do some valuable research on the listics on the lunar surface. And already we can reboard the uh, Landrover. Now, as stated before, uh, we used far too much fuel on descent, which uh, means that uh, basically, once we reboard, we will not have to doubt if we to return to Kerbin. We could reinsert into a moon orbit, but I don't really see a purpose in doing that, since again, we would just still be stranded, and we'd actually be addressing uh, some of the uh, resources there on the lower stage. So now, this crew of three is stranded on the moonar surface. So it looks like there's some um, work to be done. Yeah, I want to thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and goodbye!